హలో ఐఎమ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ రమానందన్ హెచ్ఎస్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ మెకానికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ మహారాజా ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ మైసూర్ టుడే వీ విల్ గెట్ ఎలిమినేటెడ్ ఆన్ ది టాపిక్స్ లైక్ హైడ్రాలిక్స్ అండ్ న్యూమాటిక్ సిస్టమ్స్ సో వీ హ్ ఆల్రెడీ స్టార్టెడ్ ది అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఆఫ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అ హైడ్రాలిక్ సిస్టమ్ అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అ న్యూమాటిక్ సిస్టమ్ విత్ ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ కాంపొనెంట్ బ్రీఫ్ డిస్క్రిప్షన్ స్కెచ్ ఓకే so we have seen what are the okay so called components of a hydraulic and pneumatic system so basically there are elements which are involved in uh, efficient performance of a hydraulic and pneumatic system so we have seen them all of them in the previous classes so now it is time to understand okay one by one so different types of valves which are involved in okay controlling the pressure okay, speed and the okay flow of the important medium which is the hydraulic or a pneumatic maybe fluid or a air medium so which is involved in the process so they are nothing but the valves which will totally take over the control on the cylinders so we have classified them into three different classes so pressure control valve flow control valve and direction control valve so in the previous class we have seen uh, one of the pressure okay control valves where we have to control the important parameter called as pressure of the medium because that is a core source of the working medium which will operate the linear actuator that is nothing but the cylinder the cylinder works on the so and so amount of pressure applied by the working medium so you have to balance the complete pressure which is set by the pumping element maybe a pump okay throughout the system so right from the okay pump where it gets pressurized and throughout the system till it gets come gets back comes back to the reservoir so the hydraulic system should or a pneumatic system should maintain the same pressure so that is a challenge faced okay before selecting a, any type of pressure control valves so in previous class we have seen one valve which is pressure relief valve which operates by the help of a spring and the adjusting screw okay the second part is called as pressure regulation so today's content is okay pressure reducing and pressure regulating valve cylinders and rotary actuator so we'll see rotary actuators in the upcoming classes but we'll see pressure regulation and okay cylinders in this class so why do you need pressure to be regulated throughout the system regulation is nothing but a directive way of operating okay in one way so simply to say regulation is nothing but to operate in a particular way undisturbed okay so that is nothing but the regulation so basically authority so authority means it it should see that things are happening the way it is okay so what are the types of valves which are available to so called control or regulate the pressure throughout the system so we have seen how to relieve the pressure to the tank with the help of a spring actuated and controlled valve so now we'll see so how to regulate the pressure throughout the system okay so that the outlet pressure is maintained constant so it is not erratic pressures are not exhibited during the total operation of a, any hydraulic or pneumatic system so first one okay we classify them into two different valves direct acting pressure reducing or regulating valve and second one is pilot operated pressure reducing valve okay direct acting pressure reducing valve we can see uh, this is the normal position okay initial position of the valve so you can see here there is an adjusting screw okay with uh, assisted with a spring so this is the bleed oil passage you can see here so this is the external casing so inlet and outlet there is a connection between the outlet and the bleed oil passage okay i repeat there is a connection or a contact between the bleed oil passage and the okay outlet okay why i will tell you so once the from the main system say from the pump the okay a hydraulic medium or the pneumatic medium enters into the system here okay 
So that flows through the outlet. So this is obvious process. Okay, once the fluid enters in, it goes to the outlet at the same pressure. So if ever there is a higher amount of pressure, okay, higher amount of pressure, there will be a flow to the bleed oil passage here. Okay, the bleed oil passage is always in balance with the spring force. Okay, they both are okay equal. Whenever the pressure applied by the okay the drain or the outlet okay supplied pressure to the bleed oil passage the outlet is usually flowing so along with that because of this external passage to the bleed oil the oil is always in balance or equilibrium in contact with the spring which is whose spring force is adjusted or controlled by adjusting screw so once the outlet pressure increases say there is increase of pressure in the inlet and also the outlet pressure equilibrium disturbs with the spring force in the bleed oil passage okay the spring usually compresses okay so that the outlet pressure is usually balanced here so i repeat once the pressure increases within the system the outlet passage which is always in contact with this bleed oil passage so this bleed oil will apply a pressure on the spring force so against the springs the spring gets compressed okay the spring gets compressed so that okay usually the pressure is regulated within the system okay so it is always under control and also through this drain you can see here there is a drain which is provided here okay through this drain it will enter to the tank through the drain it will enter to the the excess amount of oil the excess amount of oil when the spring compresses the excess amount of oil enters to the tank through this drain being provided okay once the system pressure is again maintained the spring force will take over and the passage is closed here so that the drain is closed and again the inlet and the outlet are functioning as usual okay whenever there is increase in the pressure the oil moves through the bleed oil passage to the drain okay to the drain to the tank so that the internal pressure within the system is always maintained okay and a normal set pressure that set pressure usually depends on this adjusting screw for the total function of direct acting pressure reducing so this is called as direct acting because always the bleed oil is in direct contact with the spring here okay so this is just a graphic symbol shown okay the drain to the tank okay to the system so whenever there is excess amount of pressure there a pilot line is shown here okay whenever there is excess amount of pressure the oil directly goes to the system to the through the drain okay usually oil goes to the system throughout the functioning of the valve but excess amount of oil or the air it gets drained out to the tank the second type of pressure reducing valve is nothing but the pilot operated pressure reducing valve you can see the setup here so this is the inlet okay inlet and uh, this is the spool valve spool valve and this is the drain to the radio, okay reduce the pressure so secondary line of pressure regulation valve okay there is one more line so this is the outlet pressure system pressure is the outlet outlet pressure and you can see uh, adjusting screw and the pilot line and also you can see here the drain okay the drain so always drain okay it is nothing but excess amount of fluid can flow to the tank so the passage so with the help of adjusting screw this pilot valve is usually with assisted with a spring here same concept as a direct acting valve so the spring tension is fixed by the adjusting screw okay and the pilot line is always blocked by the pilot valve so it acts like a one way check valve to the flow okay so once the medium starts to flow through the inlet okay uh, there is outlet pressure the medium enters through the outlet pressure as well as some amount of fluid can is allowed to flow through the reduced pressure also so this is a secondary channel or a line which is provided to for accidental or any erratic pressure damages 
not to be caused through the system. So there is one more outlet being provided for reduced pressure. Okay. If ever by even by providing this facility for the outlet, okay, there is increase of system pressure. You can see there is a channel connection from the spool okay, and the reduced pressure. Okay. Even if the pressure increases within the system or within the valve okay, through the inlet, so what happens is the pilot valve okay, is again compressed by the spring force against the spring force and the, it allows the oil to drain out to the tank. So this happens only when okay, though the functioning of the secondary channel or the reduced pressure is taking place but still the system pressure is highly increasing then only the pilot valve will function and the, the medium travels through the drain okay, easily to the tank. So this concept is called as pilot operated okay, pressure reducing valve. So next is nothing but the cylinders you can see here there are okay two types of cylinders okay usually they are made up of aluminium alloys or okay usually steels various type of steels or maybe cast iron so usually we prefer cylinders are made up of okay a higher compressibility and uh, with a hardened hardening property it carries a lot of strength it should carry a lot of strength to sustain the pressure as well as the better heat transfer characteristic okay so you can see the robust construction of various types of cylinders we usually use a single acting and double acting so what do you mean by single acting so first type is called as single acting cylinders so you can understand it this way single acting cylinders are nothing but there is only one port okay i'll explain through the diagram here so this you can see here this is the okay the inlet and uh, you can see this front cap is called as front end cap of the cylinder. So this is the piston which is being sealed with the help of piston seals here. You can see it is sealed with the help of piston seals and uh, it is supported through the piston bearings here. Okay, Through the piston bearings you can see the mounting of okay, the piston through it should travel through the same guideway. So there are guideways being provided which are supported okay, to reciprocation of the cylinder is supported by the bearing called as piston bearing and you can see this is uh, the rear cap of the cylinder is called as okay, rear end cap, front cover is called as either we call it as front cover or front end cap of the cylinder okay. and this is the piston which is assisted by a spring retraction. So extension takes place because of the fluid pressure. Okay, because of the fluid pressure here and uh, retraction is always controlled by the spring. Okay, it is only the pressure is exerted on only the piston end, okay, not on the rod end side of the piston. Okay, it is only applied on the piston face or piston end that is why it is called a single acting where the pressure is acting only on the single or one face of the piston. Okay, and there is only one port, inlet port. So same through the same port, the outlet of the medium also takes place. Inlet and outlet takes place only through the single port. That is why it is called as single acting type of cylinders. And this is the graphic symbol you can see here. The single line which indicates this is the, this itself is inlet as well as outlet. Okay, and this symbol is indicates the spring okay it is controlled by the spring retraction the inlet and the outlet takes place because of the fluid pressure and the retraction is assisted by the spring so next thing is nothing but similarly you can see here a double acting type of cylinder already you might have come across the understanding of double acting cylinders now so it is nothing but there will be two ports okay two ports that means to say oil or air exists on both sides of the piston so they exist on the okay piston side as well as they exist on the rod end side there is always the working medium throughout the cylinder unlike in your single acting where it is assisted retraction is assisted by the spring so here working medium itself will assist will exert a differential pressure so pressure varies on both the ends now 
because the surface area available is too large here on the piston side and the surface area available on the piston okay rod end side is relatively smaller okay so if i write the area of the piston as ap okay it is always greater than area of the rod end side ar so if ar is a rod end side area and ap is the area on the piston side piston side so this is always greater in case of okay the cylinders usually the rod type of piston rod cylinders so that is makes the differential pressure existing in the double acting cylinders so once the fluid enters through the inlet okay the extension of the cylinder takes place in this direction and the working medium on the other side it goes out through the outlet so you can change the direction here once the fluid enters through the inlet here the piston retracts okay that means to say the medium on the other side it travels through the other port and this acts like an outlet so inlet and outlet acts vice versa they can play the role both the role as inlet and outlet depending upon the reversal of the direction of motion in case of cylinders this is how we control the change in the direction of okay the movement of okay usually the horizontal movement the horizontal movement should be controlled okay so that is controlled with the help of usage of double acting cylinders okay and you can see the graphic symbol of double acting cylinder here the port this port is nothing but it will facilitate inlet as well as outlet okay so there is no assistance of any spring in case of double acting type of cylinders so this is and also if you use a pneumatic system so of a diameter of say 50 mm if 50 mm is the diameter of a cylinder okay in case of pneumatics okay just to quote an example okay it can go up to a pressure of 500 kilo pascal okay it can handle a pressure of 500 kilo pascal and uh, in newton okay it can sustain a pressure of around okay uh, some around 982 newton of pressure so say hydraulics if you take for an example of same diameter cylinder okay same diameter 50 mm 50 mm so it can sustain a pressure of okay some around uh, 50000 okay kilo pascal with the uh, highest pressure okay with the highest pressure of okay so more than this around 98200 newtons of pressure so that is a variation between a hydraulics and pneumatics you can just see 50 mm diameter of cylinder and a huge variation of operating pressure and the force being exerted by various cylinders here it is 982 newton it is approximately around 98200 newtons of pressure being applied by the cylinders so this is this will give you an uh, okay abrupt picture of understanding of cylinders hope this content has reached you effectively thank you